something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. Like when it drop whole game in the choke code. Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. Like when it drop whole game in the choke code. They call a podcast poppy. King goes, I see they're trying to copy. Diamonds in the chains, bust down wrists. And you ain't never seen no like this. What? Tell me something I don't know. What? Tell me something I don't know. Hey, everybody, it's the coach. And coach, we find ourselves due east from our nation's capital at FedEx Field in Lamb. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? This will be taken in at the one. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. Bringing them out is, of course, one of the most iconic QBs in NFL history. Five-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady. And you've got to think that they've got to be feeling pretty fresh. You know, coming off of the open week, didn't have to play, right? Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit, heal some of those aches and pains, and excited about playing again. That really rekindles things a little bit. I want to see how they come out and establish themselves here early. And that bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. Now Gurley. Oh, not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Here now, the offensive starters for Atlanta. Let's take a look at the big fella, Rob Gronkowski. All pro, it feels like, each and every year. And when he's healthy, he's going to be all pro. He's done it four times in his career. 69 catches, over 1,000 yards in 2017. But why is he so good? Speed, size, agility, and absolutely understands the offense and where he needs to be in order to get the football. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, there it is, partner. Brady to Gronk, their first connection of the game. You think those two often in sync? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any question about it. And look, we know Gronk has a whole lot of fun, but he's deadly serious about his football, as is Tom Brady. Two great competitors, two fantastic players. Play fake here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. A look here on your screen at how Washington's going to line up defensively. And they've been excellent against the pass. The number six unit in the NFL. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top ten in the league against the pass. But the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB, they'd easily move into the top five. Wait, 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 wait. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there in that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. The reception good for seven. It's third down. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Brady going to try and throw on third down. And he'll have his man. That's Edelman. The 13 yards that time at a first. Every coach we ever talk to says to his team before the game, quick start, guys. Let's get out of the gate fast. <laughs> How about that? They took his lesson to heart, didn't they? They did exactly that. A nice diving catch here on the game's opening drive. Go, go. 
On first down, it's Gurley. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half as some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. This is Coleman. He'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. Play number nine now on this pretty long opening drive, but this is third down. Throwing is Brady on third down. And a third down pass falls incomplete. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. And Bryant's kick is good. And the Falcons are out to a 3 nothing advantage. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? So out comes the Redskins offense now onto the field. Bringing him out is their new quarterback in 2018. Of course, came over from Kansas City. It's the 14-year veteran Alex Smith. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. Now a first down throw, it's Smith. And his first look is incomplete. Brian Poole that time there to get a hand on it. And here a look at the offensive starters for the Redskins. Jordan Reed's coming off of an injury plate season that set him back and held him to just six games. And Washington is definitely hoping he can get back to his 2016 Pro Bowl form. That made him one of the most dangerous tight ends in the game. And in fact, when he runs routes, it's often equated to a basketball player with a great crossover move. A lot of guys just can't stick with him. They run it here with Thompson. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Tackle made by Devondre Campbell. And here now the defensive starters for Atlanta. And Grady Jarrett, their defensive tackle, not just a space eater, although he plays the run very well, knows how to get to the quarterback and provide that pressure in his face up the middle. Remember his three sacks in the Super Bowl against New England. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Throwing on third down, Smith. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. They were trying to get it there to Josh Doxson. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. challenge remember last year the tablet was introduced most people seem to be happy with how that went so it's back for 2018 yeah, and I thought it helped speed up the process a little bit to be honest with you I thought it was terrific that they're able to get that done anything you can do to take some of the lulls out of the game and keep it moving both for the players and of course for fan interest I'm in favor of it and for us too no doubt The head coach relied on his eagle eye in the sky to make the right call and was told to challenge it, and it looks like it's paid off. And from a coach's standpoint, when you throw that flag, it's probably a pretty tense moment here it pays off. Yeah, you have that little bit of indecision. You throw it where you feel like you're right, and then you think, uh-oh, did I get it right? In this case, they can celebrate. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, 
that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting room. Yeah, we know where we'd be at the end today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. Bringing him down there, Jonathan Allen. And that was a good run. This was only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017. And I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. And that one's complete to Gurley. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I think defensively, you're okay with that. And you're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Brady now on first down. Green with a catch left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. On first and 10, here's Brady. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Now Brady on the bootleg. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They're in the midst of a nice drive, but facing a third and long here. From the gun, it's Brady. And this is going to be incomplete. Breaking that one up, the former All-Pro Josh Norman. So getting in there to swap that one away, Josh Norman defensively. I still remember the first time I saw him in person. It was a postseason college all-star game, and he's out of Coastal Carolina, and he was the buzz of the week. Everyone kept talking about that corner. Got to go back and do more work on him. 
It's paid off pretty darn well, hasn't it? Yeah. Josh Norman's had quite an impact in the NFL. Coastal Carolina round five, and now a stud. The punter Bosher on now as he gets this one away. Now the Redskins offense, they get set to go back to work here. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. The first carry for the rookie, it's Darius Geis. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Now Thompson. Oh, and he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. And you know, the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Ooh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. On the handoff, it's Gurley. And now running right through it. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think it's caught inside the 25. And he's going to go out of bounds, taking it down inside the 25. And that one results in 35 yards. Brady now on first down. Looking for Gronkowski, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the all-pro corner, Josh Norman. He was looking for Gronk that time. I'm not sure if there's been a better tandem than Brady to Gronk for the last half decade, so it could be a surprise when they don't hook up and a downright shock when a ball's intercepted. But that is great instincts here defensively to come away with the football. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. And they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. They start on the ground with Geis. And not much here as he'll get it to the 11, maybe the 12-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. After watching that play and result, I go back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator, Brandon, before the game and said, how are you going to move the ball running it against the number one defense? He gave us no indication, didn't tip his hand at all. So we have to see how this unfolds as this game moves along. Only able to make it to the 15 after the broken tackle. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit him over the top. From the gun on third down, Smith. He finds his target. It's Crowder. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. A nice gain of 21 yards. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. What else is that? 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Again, a run with Thompson. No, bottled up. Fumble. It's out. It's loose. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. On the ground, it's Thompson. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. That's about what you would expect since they're so efficient on picking up third downs in the top five in the NFL. It's all a mindset, and I guarantee you, it started in the offseason. Third down's important to them. They find a way to pick them up in a very good clip. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And he'll get three up to midfield. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Geis with a carry on second down. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. But at this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. On second down, here's Smith. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Jordan Reed was the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept him. And he is into the end zone for a Washington touchdown. Josh Dotson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Redskins are able to strike for six. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run right after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. Hopkins with the extra point, and the lead is now two. Here's the Redskins now as their kick unit will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it out past the 25 to the 26-yard line. 
Todd Gurley in the offense. They get set and trot back out there now. Those are his numbers through roughly the first half of the season, and given that, you'd have to think he's on pace for a 1,000-yard campaign. Steady as he goes. Steady goes the offense. But you know what else is happening, too, because they are a team now recognized for the ability to run the football. You've got to be able to throw it better now, right? Better throwing lanes, better opportunities for the guys downfield. Maybe more one-on-one -on -one coverage, which you should be able to beat easier. And the Redskins do get to him. He goes down for a sack. Zach Brown able to get him down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of a yard. Now Brady throwing on second down. He goes full extension, and he's got it. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Throwing on first down is Brady. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Looking for his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski. And that'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. On play action, now Brady finding some room at midfield. Wide open, Julian Edelman. And finally brought down at the 43. A good pick up there of 20 yards. On first down, Brady. And caught, right side, Green. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Brady, 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. Throwing on first down, Brady. His throw caught right around the six. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make it routine. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Well, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. Think he gunned down a few guys? Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Wait 20! Wait 20! Wait 20! Wait 20! Ready to throw again. Oh, it's incomplete. That would have been big in the end zone if he could have held on. Instead, it's second down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're saying. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell 20, incomplete. By 20! Again, they'll throw with Brady. This is caught, Gronkowski. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Rob Gronkowski, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Falcons are in for six. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. Bryant's extra point up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And the Falcons score to cap it off. Now here's Bryant to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. 
Now comes the Redskin offense now as they get set to begin another possession. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. The Redskins now going to use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Now Smith. And that is incomplete. I'm sure that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. He's got Thompson here, complete. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Smith now to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Here's Tressway now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Start out on the ground with Gurley. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, all right, Brandon, thank you very much. Hi again, everyone. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL as we are officially into the second half of the season. We'll start off at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Tampa Bay taking on Carolina in the NFC South. And the Panthers are out in front as they play the second quarter. The Panthers trying to hold on and claim victory. From there, it's up to New Era Field in Orchard Park to check on the Bills. And that matchup all even in their battle with the Chicago Bears. Finally, we head to the shores of Lake Erie. See what's going on with the Cleveland Browns. And they trail the visiting Chiefs in that one. Kareem Hutt take it over. Two touchdowns thus far. In the game you're watching, it's who else? Tom Brady with a strong first half. He's thrown for close to 200 yards already. And that's helped propel his guys into the lead as we send you back to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Well, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. And here come the Redskins now. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors. But overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. 
the best offenses and the ones that win are ones that make adjustments. And right now, I think this team needs to open things up. The Redskins on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and 14. A shotgun snap for Smith. And he drops this off to Thompson complete. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Give him three on the play, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And now Edelman pushing him away. Popped it right out there. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion, call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Hey, wait 20! Wait 20! Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Now a handoff for Gurley. And he's brought down. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's a gain of seven, and it's a second down. But he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Gets seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. Off the bootleg. Brady. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. That was a really nice play. We were able to stack that one up. When they get back in the got he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 
11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Now Gurley, handoff left. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Go three. Wait, 20! Brady to throw on second down. That's complete right around the eight. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, they try to swing it on left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. The Falcons on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time it's third and three. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but it um, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed him for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This is a fairly straightforward 22-yard short attempt. And Bryant's kick is good. And that now makes this a 15-7 game. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. You know, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. This one complete to Jordan Reed. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Set, line, I got it. Here's Smith now on second down. And that is incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight unable to find anyone open. The Redskins on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. Here it's third and three. Ready, line, 80. From the gun, here's Smith. And now the ball's loose. Smith loses it. Call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Here's Tressway now. He's been terrific so far. 
before they can get the punt away whistles as we've come to the end of the third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at FedEx Field. It's the Redskins with the football, but trailing here as we get down to the good stuff. Quarter number four. Here's Tressway now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> On second down, here's Brady. Ryan Kerrigan in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Now this is where field awareness comes into play. He's getting perilously close to his own goal line, and after that sack, backed up to his own two. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back, tell him to take care of the ball, and try to move forward. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that officially. Given 15, and it'll be Redskins football now with a first and 10. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second down. I said, nine, eight, eight. I said, nine. Throwing is Smith. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It's a loss of two, now third down. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Throwing on third down, Smith. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. On first and ten, Smith. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Duke Riley in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. 
you never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they left little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. From the gun on third down, Smith, open man, it's Vernon Davis. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Smith. Jay Gruden's guys unable to convert on fourth down. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that kicks first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So second and in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Off the bootleg, Brady, blitz coming and down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it, this offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and eight. Play action. Now it's Brady. And able to find Green. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That'll put him right at 99 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Brady now. Six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Brady now on first down. He gets it to Gurley, complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there, a 22. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they look to try and finish this one off. Back to the workhorse today, it's Gurley. A little second effort there on the strong run. And then drop just inside of the 20. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Brady going to look to throw. Looking middle, and that's complete. 
The Redskins looking for another timeout, and they get it. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Brady's got his guys first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Here's Gurley, and he'll be taken down here at about the 11. The Redskins going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Make it third and ten. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. I remember being taught that cliches have become so for a reason. A lot of times they're true, right? What's that they used to tell us about letting sleeping dogs lie? But this one wasn't sleeping. Maybe it was just slumbering a little bit. But taking that gamble there, you've got the lead. You may have ignited them now they stopped That's you. That's exactly right. If you take the points here, you don't shift momentum necessarily on that play. You probably just did. I said, He's back to throw. And he knocks the ball away. Falls incomplete. Brian Poole that time there to get a hand on it. Well, these corners, I tell you, they've done excellent work all game long. They remind me of guys in the past who just said, hey, throw it out here a hundred times. Nothing good is going to happen. And if you throw it in the wrong place, I'll take it the other way. Back to throw. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. It was Ricardo Allen there on the coverage. This secondary as a unit, they've worked really well together in this one, especially late. A lot of cohesiveness, a lot of communication, and some great athleticism. They're playing so well now, a nickname is sure to follow. They're going to have to name this whole unit soon. The Redskins on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and ten. They'll look to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. This defense looking impenetrable now. Three straight incompletions. They're giving them nowhere to go with the football. Maybe a little frustrated back there. Oh, there's no doubt about it. When you've missed on three straight, there's going to be some frustration. But now he's got to make sure that that frustration is temporary, not lingering. Big throw coming up. Back to throw. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Falcons are close to finishing off this football game. So that one hurt. No timeouts left. Look at where the ball is on the field, Charles. I, I don't know if the fat lady's singing yet, but she's starting to hum a little bit, isn't she? You think she's doing scales at this point? <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt about it, but they had to go for it. In this situation, with their timeout situation as well, they had to take the chance, try and get it done. They didn't. Now they're powerless to stop them, essentially. They need a big play somehow from their defense. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. 
No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Falcons, they continue to cruise through this first half of the schedule as they move to 8-0 now on the campaign.